Hello everybody at home, welcome to Plank. Um, go ahead and pause the video and copy down the opening slide. All right, y'all. If you remember, during the opening day of this unit, um, I took it to the other room. I showed you all the cool ways that electrons produce light. We had some fun, but we came back that day, and I drew a wave on the board. And we talked about some uh, properties of light waves. We talked about wavelength, energy, frequency, and you learned some of the generalizations on how they connect to each other. You know, for example, that if wavelength is way up, then energy is way down and some other relationships like that. What we want to finish with today is instead of being real general about those concepts, we want to say, all right, well, if wavelength were to go up one meter, how much would the energy drop quantitatively? And we can apply numbers to it. The scientist that helped us do this is a dude named Planck. And what Planck did is he quantified the amount of energy in a flash of light. And that amount is called Planck's constant. Anybody in here watch Stranger Things? All right, oh good, we have a lot more than my other classes. In Stranger Things, near one of the later seasons, there's a scene where they sing the never ending story together. But the whole thing that leads to that singing song, that, that singing moment is one of the friends calls their um, nerdy girlfriend because to get into a vault to kill the monster, they have to know of uh, constant value. And it's Planck's constant, which made me feel really important um, watching that scene. But anyway, um, this opening screen right here is vitally important, all right? It's got all of the answers to any questions that you might run into. So during this lecture, if there's any point where you're like, I don't think I have that number, go here, it's here, it's on the opening screen. Like if you look up top, I show you what all of the variables mean. So if you're like, I don't remember what H is, it's there, all right? Then I've got a bunch of constant values. Like, do you see how H shows up again and it's the 6.63 blah, blah, blah number? That is Planck's constant. Look here. Remember, he's the scientist that quantified the amount of energy in a flash of light. Do you think there's a lot or a little amount of energy in a flash of light? Luckily, they're wrong because they said a lot and there's not. If there was a whole lot of energy in a flash of light, it would be really annoying walking around planet Earth, considering most of the time we are in illuminated areas, because we'd be feeling that energy. There's not a lot of energy in a flash of light, and Planck proved that. Look at his number. Look at the, that H number. E to the negative 34. What does that mean? It means you slide the decimal to the left 34 times. And what does that give you? A super little number, right? Because there's not much energy in a flash of light. But it's because of his studies that we are able to add values to all of this wavelength frequency nonsense that we talked about at the beginning of this unit. Another constant value up there is the speed of light because that's important, but you don't have to memorize it. How do you know you don't have to memorize it? Because it's highlighted in yellow. You wrote a little note there, but do you see how there's four items highlighted in yellow? Those will be on your formula chart on Friday. So just know how to use them. But there's some other constant values not highlighted in yellow. That's because we covered those in unit one. So you're supposed to know the conversion factor for nanometers and meters and stuff like that. If you've forgotten, then relearn it. But I put it here so that you could reference the single screen for everything that you could possibly need when calculating this stuff. In red, there's a bunch of equations, all right? We're gonna plug and chug those equations today. Hopefully it's not an issue for you, but only two of them are highlighted. The reason only two of them are highlighted is because this equation can give you these two, and this equation can give you that one, all right? Just by doing some seventh grade manipulations. If you, don't know how to do those move variables around, I need three minutes of your time. Come see me for three quick minutes, be like, I suck at it, and three minutes later, you won't, all right? I can help you out, because I'm only giving you the highlighted ones, so you need to know how to get the other ones. Or if you're like, I don't want to learn how to manipulate variables, fine, memorize the ones that aren't highlighted, I guess. 
but uh, you'll need to know. Put a star by the very last one. See that last red equation? Put a little star by him. Because that one I can't give you, and it can't be manipulated. So, yeah, maybe memorize that one. But hopefully with the practice, remember, I'm giving you two computer days in a row. Hopefully all the practice you're going to do on Canvas, it will accidentally melt into your brain. I know, this is a long intro, sorry. Finally, and probably the most important stuff on the screen, is the green at the bottom. What it does there, I'm gonna give you motion sickness, is um, it gives you the units that are required for all of the red equations. Lambda, which is wavelength, all right, is measured in meters. Energy is measured in joules. Of course, E is energy, figuring this out. And V is frequency, and it's measured in hertz or S minus one. Yo, know, the reason those units are vitally important is because, first off, you can't have naked numbers. You need to know what unit to put after your answer. But also, sometimes the problem gives you different versions of those units, which is really annoying. I'll show you in our first example. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, that symbol's called a lambda. You don't need to know that, but that symbol's called lambda. Degrees. All right, y'all. Let's be good at math. Look at the sheet I handed out to you. You're going to have to do some pausing every time I flash this because they have a hard copy and you probably don't. All right, but this is the sheet that I gave you. Y'all, this is not homework. You, you don't have, this is just the, the class problems. We don't have time for you to write them down. So I printed them because I love you. But um, if you're wondering, oh, well, should I work them out on the paper or in my notes? I don't know, whatever works for you. You're not turning this in. Uh, but make sure wherever you work the practice problems is something you're not gonna lose because you're gonna wanna look back at this when you pull up Canvas at a later time. I've kind of. You want to come say hi to the video, then? Come on. This is Alex, everybody. Say hi, Alex. They're not very nice, I guess. Okay. It's good seeing you. Yes. Yeah. What do I have some bad news for her? Um, all right. Okay. So we're going to be working through some of these problems today. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at question two. All right, I'm going to skip around because it'll help you out. All right, so look at question two. Question two. Now, look here. Listen, listen, listen. I'm skipping question one because it's very straightforward. Question one, you find an equation, you plug in the variables, and you hit enter, and you're done. A bunch of the canvas um, problems are that straightforward. I'm skipping it to go to a slightly harder one because you'll get more value out of me going over that with you. But realize that not all of the problems require the extra step that we're about to start with. But look at number two. Here we go. Here we go. It says calculate the frequency of light. Calculate the frequency. What's the variable for frequency? V. Now remember, if I anytime I ask a question, you're like, I don't know. Go to the opening slide. It's all there. It's V, all right? V is the, uh, the variable for frequency. You can prove it by looking at the opening slide, all right? So here's, here's what I see. It says calculate the frequency. So I'm trying to pick an equation. So I'm going to say V equals because I'm looking for frequency. And now what I'm going to do is look at the red equations, all right? V equals. I want one that says V equals. All right, but hey, but look, look at the other data that we have here. 907 nanometers. Now, we're going to have an issue with nanometers, but of the green items at the bottom, which one is nanometers closest to? Wavelength, meters, right? Nanometers, it, it needs to be meters and we're going to fix it, but it's a wavelength that it's trying to give you. So here's what I'm looking for. Don't write this. I'm looking for an equation that says V equals, because I need to find frequency, and something with wavelength. Look at the red equations. Do you see one that is V equals something with that lambda sign? What is it? V equals what? It's V equals C over lambda. 
is the only one that matches the criteria that we're kind of looking for here. <laughs> so that's the equation that we're going to use. But as I mentioned, there's an issue with nanometers. Again, y'all, those green variables are the only ones, I'm sorry, the green units are the only ones that can go into any of the red equations. Nanometers is no good, so let's fix it. It's an easy fix, it's just annoying that we have to do it. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna take the nanometers that it gives me, which is 907, work with me, 907 nanometers. We don't want it to be nanometers. We want it to be meters. Dimensional analysis. Let's remember what goes in this square. Nanometers, right? It's a diagonal drag. Remember, you drag not the number, the units. You just drag the units down here right? And then you're like, cool, now I need numbers. What are the numbers? Well, guess what? I got you hooked up because if you look over here from unit one, we know that we've got conversion factors for nanometers and meters. It's probably really loud when I'm talking. Anyway, as the screen says, for every one of those, you have one E negative nine of those. <clears throat> Multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. Get your calculator up because a lot of y'all have forgotten how to get an E on your calculator. If you remember, all right, it's going to be 907. Then you hit the second button. The button above the seven gives you the E. And now it's waiting for negative, not minus, negative nine divided by one. Oh. So 907 times one E negative nine. I didn't put the times in there, sorry. All right. 907 times one E negative nine, my apologies. Call me over if you can't get the E. Let me see your calculator. Remember, it's the second button and then the button above the seven. All right, all right, here we go. So 907 by the times one. Remember, you multiply across the top. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm happy to help you. Because you hit minus, not negative. It's because you hit minus, not negative. Stay. You should not hit the blue minus button a single time today. The negative button at the very bottom of the calculator. Your calculator for this little conversion should kick out the number. 9.07 e negative 7. Now, remember what we've done. All we did was we took the nanometers it gave us, and we were like, nope, Planck requires meters. And we turned it into meters. Now, let's see if we can use the equation that we originally chose. Here we go. Frequency equals, uh-oh, do we know what C is? We always know what C is because check it, check it. Anytime we think we don't know something, it's probably living right there. All right? So C is the speed of light. It's a constant value. Three E eight over wavelength, which we just fixed, right? It gave us a wavelength, but it was the wrong units. There's the correct units. 
9.07 e negative 7. Aliana, you're leaving. See if you can solve this. That divided by that. Watch your calculator button pushes. Call me over if you're stuck or look at or talk to a neighbor. Where you at? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. Perfect. Perfect. Here's the final answer. Now, sig figs matter, right? And it looks like we were given three sig figs, so that's what I'm going to round to. And I get 3.31. E14. Yeah, it does. It's right there. Yeah, it's there. Y'all, your calculator, if you look on the far right and smaller numbers, that E14 is there. But my number is naked. What are the units of this answer? Now look, look, what, what, what did we find? We found V. Look at the green, look at the green, look at the green. Yeah, what happens if you drop a hammer on your foot? It hurts. Or you could put S negative one, that would be just as correct. But yeah, remember, anytime you need info, it is on that opening slide. Y'all, my goal today is to not to make you feel 100% about Plank, all right? It's going to take the next computer days to feel really good, so we're just going to push forward. But let me show you a slightly easier one to ease your mind in case you feel like you hate this. Look at number three. Look at number three. All right, we're focusing on three. Let's read it together. It says... What frequency? Now remember, when I start reading the question, I start thinking about what equation I need to use. So what frequency, what's the variable for frequency again? It's V. Again, it wants us to find V. That won't always be the case, but whatever. It wants us to find V. And then look at what it gives us. What is that number? It's something, something joules. So the number is energy because look at the green it's energy so i need v equals something that involves energy look at your red choices do you see one it's the only one v equals e over h all right so that's how i pick my equation in case that's where you get stuck later All right, so now let's let's see what we got. All right, V equals, the energy in the question is in joules. Is that an okay unit? Yes, because if the unit is in green, it's a good unit, which is why this is a more straightforward one. We don't have to do an annoying little fix it. Instead, that number's perfect as E. So let's take it. Let's grab that number, uh, 4.58. Um, e negative 19, that's the, the question in the problem. Over, uh-oh, H. What the heck is H? It's Planck's constant. It's our magical number. But do we know what that number is? Yes, yes, it's going to be, it's in yellow highlighter. It'll be on your formula chart. 
e negative 34. And look, we are already ready to finish the problem. I'm going to draw a card for this answer, though, so get there. If you get an answer, go ahead and show it to someone sitting near you. See if they got the same answer. If not, figure out why. All right. Let's go over to cluster four. Oh, it's only a half full cluster. Be ready, Aspen. Cluster four, seat three. We did find somebody, though. Featherstone, what'd you get? All right, why don't you call me over for such a thing? We get to be buddies now. Are you ready? Now, I sit here. All right, so let's go first. Uh, so 4.58. Okay, what do you mean? This is the answer. This is the answer. Where's the Oh, okay, so you see that times 10 right there? It's times 10 is a power. So it's this E. That's, that's what E means. E means times 10. Exactly. So, so read it to me. Oh, beautiful. Yep, 6.91 E what? E14. And does anybody want to share units with me? Hertz, right? Or S minus 1, whichever one you want to use. That question was easier, yeah? Half of the questions I ask you would, should be about that direction. Let's keep going. I want you to look at question A. Look at your question. You see how it goes 1, 2, 3, A, B, C? All right. Look at question A. Now, I'm going to show you, or I want to explain another thing you need to think about. This is really important. Okay. Look at the first five red equations. Look at the first five red equations. What variable do all five of them have? They all have frequency. They all have V. You're back. He says she's not made it here yet. They're waiting on you. Yeah. I mean, I guess attendance. That was funny timing. Hi, everybody. Okay. Train of thought. Oh, yeah. Um, they all have frequency. So here's, here's what I need you to do. You see that very last equation over there? It's the only one that doesn't use frequency, all right? This dude over here. So anytime you run into a question that doesn't have frequency anywhere, it is automatically that equation, all right? I mean, for obvious reasons. It's not even that tough to think about because it's the only one without frequency. But what you can do when you hit a new question is look for the word frequency or look for the units hertz, or S negative one. If you can't find frequency or the units of frequency anywhere, you'll automatically use that last equation. So with that said, look at question A. Do you see frequency anywhere in question A? No, there is no sign of frequency, which means I am automatically going to use E equals HC over lambda. There's my equation. Now let's just find the items to plug and chug. If I look at B, I'm sorry, when I look at A, 
it says determine how much energy. So that's already good news because it wants me to find energy and energy is already isolated in this equation. It says to find it, I'm going to take H. Uh-oh, do I know what H is? Always. H is Planck's constant. So 6.63 E negative 34 times C. Uh-oh, do I know what C is? Always. It's the speed of light. 3 E 8 over wavelength, do I have a wavelength given? Kind of, I mean, look at the question. Right, it does give me a wavelength, but they're in the wrong units again. But y'all, you know, these steps, they're repetitive and annoying. But once you can do it, you can do it. So yeah, it does give me a value but it's 462 nanometers. So let's fix that because I'm not allowed to mix nanometers with Planck. Instead of nanometers, I need meters. Drag the diagonal, units only. And then see if you know conversion factors, which of course, in your brain, because they're not yellow highlighted, won't be on your formula chart. But we know that one of these is one E negative nine of those. Multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. Careful with your button pushing. And I get 4.62 E negative 7. Is everybody okay with that green number? All I did was fix the wavelength because the units were wrong, and now I've got meters. Find the answer. I'll draw a card. There's a lot of room for error here in terms of your calculator. Find the energy. Watch your sig figs. Watch your units. Oh, no. Talk to somebody. Let's go over to cluster four again. Yay. Nothing like Featherstone twice in a row, am I right? <laughs> cluster four, 
seat four. Ask when it's going to be you. Do you have an answer for me? What? Jules, perfect. That is a perfect answer. And now, at this wavelength of light, we know the exact amount of energy that the electrons gave off when they got excited and they returned to the ground state and they gave off photons while they were spinning in their orbitals at different energies and cloud shapes and all the amazing things that you've learned about electrons. Let's do one more. Look at B. Oh, don't roll your eyes at me. Look at B. All right, we're still skipping two of the problems I wanted to do. All right, last one, last one. All right. Now, when you look at B, do you see that there is no frequency anywhere? Verify there's no frequency anywhere. So that's one of the things that we check. So right away, I know that I'm going to use the only equation that doesn't use frequency. All right? So let's see what we got. All right? Do we have an energy? Does do we have an energy? <laughs> kind of. It does give, it gives us a joules, but it's not joules, it's... Ah, boo, kilojoules. We know how to fix it, though. Let's fix it. I know. It sucks, but I hadn't showed you this yet. Here we go. 2.5 E negative 20 kilojoules is what's given in the problem. Our screen in green says that kilojoules is no good. Only joules can go into it. All right, drag the diagonal. And now we need conversion factors. And again, look at your screen. I gave them to you, even though you're supposed to know. Them. But on your screen, it says that one of those is a thousand of those. And I get and now I've got a joules amount that can go into the equation. Yes. Here, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come by. I'll come by in a second because I'm about to cut you all loose. All right. We have eight minutes left in class. I'm going to give you half of that time to get as far as you can get. Look, look, look. This is the energy. The H and the... Oh, whoops. That's not a V. Why are you going to yell at me? The H and the C are constant values. So you've got that number, you always have those numbers, and you're looking for that number. Can you figure out the algebra? You got four minutes, impress me. Talk to a partner. If you feel stuck, talk to someone near you. Collaboration is the answer. Just do whatever the, whatever the good is. 
Everything across is multiplied. Everything down is a problem. So that's why we pull that's why we pull our grid slowly so we don't lose the if it's one, you don't, but of course, there's circumstances that it's not. Yeah, here we can it's perfect. But that, that is the answer. Yeah, it's cool. So, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the second and the button right next to it. I can make that become scientific function. You did all the work for us. So this is the right, right. So this number is this. You have this law. This is this number. You are solving for that. So put that number at that spot and now solve for x. I'm about to show you my answer. Another minute. I wish I could give you more time, but the world is mean to us. Take another minute and I'll show you my answer. Are you ready for the reveal? I'm going to show my work and I'm going to let y'all breathe it in for 20 seconds and then I'll explain what I did. I'm glad that you're the, somebody thinks so. Again, I'm about to explain, stand by another second. All right, so E equals HC over lambda, check it out. There's the E value that we fixed, right? It gave us E 2.5 E negative 20, but I turned it into these joules equals Planck times light divided by wavelength, and we need wavelength, so I called it x instead of lambda, all right? And then I cross multiply, so what do I do? I put that number over one, because that's the easiest way to think about it. So one times Planck, or it's one times h times c is that number, and then my joules times x is joules x, and then isolate the x, so I divided by the number on that x, so it got x all by itself, which is wavelength, but whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, if you got 7.99, blah, 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 you did it right. I just, you have to round it to sig figs. So um, that's the rounding stuff there that, if that's your only issue, that's awesome. It's easily fixed. Questions? Y'all, tomorrow I'm going to be walking around while you're practicing this hardcore the next day also, so you're going to get good at plank. Good day. <laughs>